Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch and welcome to a video that I was really hoping was going to be a lot more positive but it just isn't. I didn't buy this watch to roast it, I bought it hoping it would be amazing but it just isn't and it was far more expensive than it should have been even though I bought it in a sale. The watch in question is a Citizen GG2103-72X. It's gold tone. Annie Digi, 1980s reissue with a stainless steel case, multiple displays and a temperature sensor. You can see why I was interested in this one. You can see why I was hoping it would be amazing. Now the Citizen RRP on this one is 575 Australian dollars. I'm going to show you the watch and then I'm going to show you what else you can currently buy in Australia for $575, okay? Now, I didn't pay that. I have been watching this one and I have been watching the price slowly come down. I paid just over half of that. I paid $299 Australian dollars a couple of weeks ago in a sale. So I bought it close to 50% off and I still feel like I've been ripped off. It's not a good start to a video, is it? I'm not sure it's going to get any better for this one either. Let's flip the camera and find out. All right, let's get straight into it today. I guess my beef is not really with the watch in the box. It can't help who it is. My beef is with the company that makes it and the price that they are trying to charge for it. This is not a retro reissue as such. Not like the Casio F100 or the Casio LF20, for example, which are modern reissues of old models. This one's more like the Citizen Aqualanda, a living fossil, a relic, a crocodile, a salamander, or indeed a shark. Apparently Citizen mildly updated the module in this one a couple of years ago because the perpetual calendar in the original watches only counted up to 2019. This one counts up to 2099, but other than that, the watch remains essentially the same as it did in the 1980s. So why is it so bloody expensive? Surely the tools, the machines that they manufacture this one with have paid for themselves many times over to this point. So what I thought I'd do today is get the basics out, the dimensions and specifications. I will then show you what this watch does and what this watch doesn't do. And then I will tell you what you, or indeed what I could have bought instead of this one for the same money and what I think this watch is actually worth. I'll leave timestamps, you're welcome to skip ahead. I should give Citizen credit for their class leading five year domestic warranty and I should also remind you that this is the JG2103-72X with the caliber 89. 89. So in terms of dimensions, it's not a big watch. 1980s watches weren't large and this square case style definitely isn't generally large either. 31 mil in diameter, 8.4 mil thick with a 34 mil lug to lug, probably the shortest lug to lug I've seen on anything. Lug width is 18, but it's also not really applicable because it's a very awkward fitment if you take this standard bracelet off. 68 grams as supplied, and that is a mineral crystal covering the dial. 30 meters of water resistance, so don't get it wet. Now, unlike a lot of retro Casios, this watch is actually made of stainless steel, which is then IP coated in gold. Most of the affordable retro Casios are just resin and then IP coated, so they rub off to reveal nasty gray plastic. This one will rub off to reveal a little bit of shiny metal instead. It is also a nasty bracelet, though. That is a full on old school road link hair nipper also IP coated with that double security fold over clasp. Fully adjustable though, so you will get a decent fit. Case back, arguably the nicest part of the watch, materially speaking anyway. Nice brush finish, comprehensive spec sheet, module 8989. Japanese movement, but of course, like the rest of the world, made in China. And that's it on wrist. It is a pleasant shade of gold combined with the brown. Definitely a bit of retro appeal. It's got those analog dials, plenty of digital dials, and it has that what looks like a little loudspeaker there. Unfortunately though, it's only a visual resemblance to this Dick Tracy watch. You can't phone head office using your Citizen. But it does have one feature the Dick Tracy watch doesn't. It will remove a lot of your arm hair if you wear it loose, it has just taken off several of mine. All these Roadlink bracelets do that. Yeah, 
the 80s weren't fun for hairy armed men and the 2020s aren't fun either for hairy armed men who enjoy 80s style watches like this one. 3134 sounds positively microscopic, doesn't it? But there it is with a bit of a different perspective. It doesn't look at all bad on my seven inch wrist. Just one problem. What time is it? What, you actually wanna use this thing to tell the time? What do you think it is, a watch? Yeah, all right, let's discuss what this thing actually does. This is it in standard timekeeping mode. So you have the home time displayed across the two LCD lines in the bottom right corner, also replicated with the first analog display, A1, they call it rather handily, in the top left corner. Now you can actually set those two independently of each other, so you can use this one as a pseudo GMT, have a permanently displayed second time zone using that analog dial. The second analog dial, handily labeled A2, is currently showing the ticking seconds. But if I press this top pusher once, it spins to 12. That's telling me that the alarm is currently set for 12. If I press it one more time, it will swing round to half past four, telling me that is where the dual time, the second time zone is currently set. So here we are effectively tracking three time zones if we want to. Mode button is the top left. If I press it once, you can see this bottom left flicks to mode. So day of the week, date of the month, and temperature. Now, it is not 27.6 degrees in my house at the moment, I assure you. It is registering that high because it's pretty much taken the ambient temperature from my skin, or at least halfway between the room temperature and my skin temperature. Citizen says in the manual for this one, if you want to get an accurate read of the ambient room temperature, you take the watch off your wrist, you leave it on a desk for between 20 and 30 minutes. Ain't nobody got time for that. Indeed, it becomes a relatively useless function. Therefore, that by the way, is not a microphone. That is the temperature sensor. If I press the mode one more time, single alarm, one more time, dual time. Again, that is independently adjustable. One more time, and I've got a stopwatch. And it start, whoops, no, it's actually start, stop, and reset, but it does measure down to one thousandth of a second, which I guess is quite fun. One more push of the mode and you're back to the timekeeping mode. Now, all of this can be set fairly easily actually. If you hold down this top button, there we are. It's in set mode. You can then cycle through all of the different functions, you know, hours, minutes, day, 12 hour, 24 hour. Now this one, if I press it one more time and the whole time starts flashing, that means I can then set this analog time if I hold this one down there. Yeah, there you go. So as I said, you can set this one independently of the home time, giving you the ability to track a second slash third time zone if you want to. One more push of the mode and that will lock in any changes that you made. Believe it or not, there is some loom on those analog displays, or at least one of them. They haven't bothered putting loom on the second hand in the top right, oh, no idea what's going on there. You can also see a truly pathetic light hovering somewhere near the LCD display. In all honesty though, it's probably more useful than the loom, which doesn't say much, does it? So that's what it does. How much do you think this watch is worth? How much would you pay for this watch? Leave me a comment, I'll be really interested to see what the average price is. I'm gonna show you what you can buy in Australia for the RRP that they're charging. I'm then gonna show you what I could have bought instead of the 299 that I paid for this. And then I'm gonna tell you how much I think it's actually worth. Those bandits, those highwaymen at Citizen want 575 Aussie dollars for one of these. Now 575 can buy you a king turtle. I know they're not exactly equivalent, but that is a proper full-size dive watch with an automatic movement and sapphire crystal. For a couple of dollars more, you can buy one of those hot new Seiko reissues if you want to. This one from the boutique with a five-year warranty. If you want to stick with Citizen, you could buy one of those Cushio 64 limited editions and have plenty of change in your pocket, or a Seiko Pressage Cocktail Time Mockingbird, and again, some change in your pocket. But Jody, you didn't pay 575, you paid 299. Yes, I did, and here's what I could have bought instead. I could have had my pick of the Seiko 5 ranges, 
whether we're talking their 5KX dive style, their field watches, or the dress KXs. And if I wanted to stick with Citizen, there are no shortage of eco drives, chronographs, or indeed Citizen Promaster dive watches with automatic movements and 200 meters of ISO rated water resistance. But I appreciate again that these are not exactly equivalent. What about this Casio then? For 66 Australian dollars, you get an Anna Digi retro timepiece that'll take off all of your arm hair and you have well over $200 still in your bank account. Now there are Star Wars branded versions of this which adds a little bit of cool as far as I'm concerned and there are plenty of them, but these are US dollar prices, nearly 250 US. I just don't think the watch is worth that materially at all. I think this watch should have an Australian RRP of $229, maybe 199 Australian dollars, and be available for purchase from a discount online retailer for about 149 Australian dollars. I would be comfortable with that. I would be comfortable recommending it for what it is at that price. Now, Citizen want 575, I reckon it's worth 149. I reckon it is only worth 25% of the price that they are trying to charge for it. This watch is therefore a massive ripoff. So I'm sorry my friend, no fancy macro lens and B-roll slider treatment for you today. It's not your fault that the company making you are being incredibly greedy in their attempt to sell you. So there you have it. What can I say? It's a tough one today. I can see lots of arguments against this watch and very few arguments for this watch. If you want a gold tone 1980s novelty reissue, there are so many cheaper watches by Casio, you should buy one of these instead. Thanks for making it all the way to the back end of the video. I hope to see you again in a future one.